Hello and welcome to Construction Week's third episode of the Hard Hat Chat webinar series designed to delve into the current and engaging developments across the region's construction sector. My name is Ashley Williams, I'm the editor of Construction Week Middle East and returning for our webinar series today is Fisher Middle East who are going to be exploring seismic solutions for MEP services across the Middle East's built environment. Today we are joined by Fisher Middle East's Head of Engineering for its Saudi Arabia division, Fami al and our special guest for today, SSH International Consultants, Senior Lead Mechanical Engineer Imran Sheikh, who will be delivering their expertise today within the seismic design field. So Fami and Imran, uh, thank you very much for, for joining us today. I'm sure our viewers will be very interested in hearing your insights. Thank you very much for having me today. No problem at all. So, uh, just, so just before we start with today's webinar, um, I'd like to give a brief uh, overview of our panelists today. So Fami has more than nine years of experience uh, and is an expert in providing techno commercial solutions for fixing uh, methodology, insulation systems, MEP seismic design, and fire stock materials. And Fami has handled many projects within the GCC, especially in Saudi Arabia, by providing efficient solutions and design for all activity related to civil, uh, MEP, uh, and seismic requirements in compliance with local and international codes and regulations. While Imran has more than 10 years of experience uh, in technical and commercial management, uh, energy efficient, efficient MEP design, uh, site execution, and green building and energy auditing facilitation. In his current role uh, at SSH, uh, Imran is responsible for leading the mechanical, de mechanical design for various uh, high profile projects in the Middle East region. Uh, and not forgetting, he's also the vice chairman of the Chartered Institution of Building Services Engineers, where he works to promote the advancement and improvement um, of the regional building service industry by collaborating with the likes of industry professionals, academia, and governmental entities. Uh, so now I have the introductions. Uh, let's begin with today's discussion. So seismic design uh, is obviously a, a very important area of engineering um, where the Middle East is, is quite frequently exposed to, to national, natural uh, disasters such as earthquakes. So, Fami, perhaps you could start off um, today by telling our viewers um, how Fisher Middle East operates within seismic design uh, for MEP services. W what does your role entail within this field? Fami, can you hear us? Uh, thank you, Ashley, for your nice introduction and uh, good afternoon. Yes. Thank you, Ashley, for go, this go nice Sorry, I think a lag. Good afternoon, everyone. Good, uh, good morning. Oh, okay. So thank you for coming to our webinar about seismic uh, bracing solution for MEB services. <clears throat> Actually, Ashley Fisher is an uh, innovative solution company. We are based in Germany, and we have our offices distributed in Middle East area. We have an uh, agents in each area like uh, Saudi Arabia, Qatar, Oman, Bahrain. And Fisher, we have a full team, sales and technical and engineering department. From beginning of the project and from day one of the project, we are working closely to the customer, to the project. We are reading their specification and uh, project requirement. And based on the specification and the requirement, we will provide them with the most efficient, productive solution to solve their issue, whatever the application for seismic, for MEB support system, for fixing uh, system. But let's talk today especially about seismic support system. For seismic supporting system, from day one, we are meeting the designer, the contractor, the consultant, and our duty to increase their awareness about the importance of installing the, fish, the, for the bracing wire system or bracing system for uh, MEB services. Because as you said, in the last five years or 10 years, there is a frequent of earthquake happening in the area and the seismic, it become a mandatory or uh, an 
a mandatory solution for the bridge building to protect our services and to protect the life loss. <clears throat> so we are offering them with our value engineering product. We are offering them with a site survey to visit the site project, the site of the project, and to see the exact solution. We are providing them an on-site seminar to increase their uh, awareness about the seismic support system, why it's required, and also our duty to train the worker, their worker at site, how to install the bracing system in the correct way, in the right way, to avoid and eliminate the time consuming and also to give them the best solution based on our experience and based on our experience in ongoing project and the best practice, practice solution we see that it is an efficient and engineered uh, solution. So, so this is how we are operating the seismic in the region as official. Okay, uh, and Imran, what, what, tell us what, what your role entails at SSH and, and particularly at the, the Chartered Institution of uh, Building Services Engineers. Is, is it kind of the same, what, what Fami just explained? Is there anything different that you can tell us? Well, thanks Ashley and everyone for having me again. Um, yes, definitely where SSH comes in or where the, the Chartered Institution of Building Services comes in is more on the, the design and the, the supervision side of things and being a consultant, it is important that at early stage we lie with the client to make the decisions that form the, the basis for the information required to select the seismic restraints for the MEP systems in line with the, the local code requirements and also best practices. Um, any additional information is then updated, refined in the existing SSH seismic specification sections and drawings. So that information is available to all the contractors and sub suppliers. Then uh, in terms of the specification, we also call for assessment report and calculations from uh, independent uh, specialist agency for further validation during material submittal approval and shop drawing submission. So the manufacturing and installation need to be by the, the specialist to assure correct installation and adjustment of the isolation equipment, which Fami also mentioned uh, briefly in his uh, discussion. So it's very important that uh, the they submit a report in uh, certifying the correctness of installation and compliance with approved uh, submittal data. Also, uh, we ensure that the, the manufacturer and representative are well experienced in the region for at least 10 years. Um, and finally, all of it is uh, inspected and validated by a site team. So this is how generally we approach from the SSH perspective. From the, the SIPSI perspective, we are busy writing guidelines in the region. Um, we last year wrote it for UAE, uh, which we are busy updating, including the seismic requirements. And uh, we are also writing the guidelines for Saudi Arabia and Abu Dhabi region. So in this, we will be focusing on the seismic uh, restraints, looking at the recent activities in the region and do the relevant updates accordingly. So that's how usually uh, we approach uh, the seismic in the region. Okay, and Imran, are you able to elaborate to us, um, you know, the, the importance of, of seismic bracing for the MEP sector? What, what can you tell us about that in terms of in terms of seismic bracing? Yeah, that's a that's a very important question. Now, to sum it up in a one line, we we can say it's people, property and operation continuity protection. These are the paramount important factors. We all know that with the recent activities, earthquakes can lead to business disruption, causing damage to MEP, smoke and fire protection systems or equipment. Differential movement of building systems during an earthquake may cause them to break, fall, or collide and damage other adjacent systems. Um, uh, and it can injure people. Thus, fixing of the MEP components and the seismic restraints to the building structure is of very paramount importance to maintaining the building function following an earthquake. So it is a responsibility of the, the design professionals uh, of record for the MEP systems to work with the structural engineer of record and the architecture uh, of record, along with the, the contractors and manufacturers to ensure that the, the anchorage points for the MEP component supports and restraints have been designed uh, properly to transfer the, the design seismic loads 
as well as any other debt weight and service loads. Um, so yeah, so like I said, in one line, there's people, property, and operation continuity protection. Okay, and Fami, uh, we were speaking obviously before we went on, on air today, and then you would like to actually ask a question for our uh, participants today uh, with regards to the importance of seismic bracing. Um, would you like to do that now? Yes, sure. The importance of seismic is a really uh, great question from you, Ashley. But before answering you and adding to what Mr. Imran uh, said, I just want to ask everyone here hearing us, and please write your answer in the chat box, in the public chat box. Uh, what is your expectation or how many earthquakes happened in the Middle East area, especially in GCC, in the last five years? Can you just, could just guess any number, just to feel how the importance of the seismic bracing in the project? So I think you can get some answers coming in soon. Um, but Fami, give us your take on the importance of seismic bracing until we get some answers in from, uh, from uh, some of our participants. Yeah, we start getting some answers. 12? Someone yeah, 12. will say more than 12? Any uh, higher or lower? Any, anyone else? Um, I think maximum 12. As we have the record, the official record in five in the last five years, here we are hearing 20. No idea. The number of earthquakes happened in the Middle East, especially in GCC, is more than 70,000 earthquakes. Wow. 70, yes, 70,000 earthquakes, it's a huge number. And if we didn't feel in the ground, movement in the ground, that's that not mean that we don't have an earthquake. earthquake. Earthquake and the movement in the ground, it is there every day, but we are not feeling it's based on the degree of this earthquake. So 70,000 earthquake bear in the five, in last five years, it is a huge number. And sure, we need to take care about this and how we can make our life and our property and money safe without any losing. Now, the importance of seismic bracing during the earthquake the building and its accessories and services inside the building, it will move in two different directions. Because the ground, it will move like this, so it will force the building and the services to move in two different directions. For sure, this different movement, it will affect all the utility and services inside the building. So once the earthquake happened, let's say 90% of the time, all the MEB services, it will fall down. <clears throat> it will fall down because of the different movement in the building. Now, what will happen after falling down the MEB services on ground? First of all, the MEB services will fall down, then it will block the corridors, where the people inside the building, they cannot escape to the emergency exit or some uh, emer or nearby gate for them, due to all the services, duct, pipes, cable tray, floor ceiling, it will come down in the ground and it will block the corridors. And also, usually in the seismic or earthquake, the fire will happen because some electrical circuit will happen in the cables, so it will make the fire. If we didn't secure our fire protection pipes with a seismic bracing system, how we will control the fire in that time? So that's why on all of this, it will give us the importance of installing the seismic bracing in the building. Especially, we need to protect, as Imran said, to protect the life, of the people, this is the main concern, the safety in the building, and also the client and the owner for the building, he wants to save his property from any damages. And we had a, we had a few people um, commenting on your, on your question there, Fami. So yeah, thank you very much, obviously, for those who um, put their guesses through. Um, and obviously, make sure to uh, get any other questions off your chest and write it in the chat box, and then we'll try and get them answered for you uh, at the end of the, of the session. But uh, moving on, we, I want to move on to um, the differentiations of codes for MEP hangers and seismic bracing now. So Fami, um, could, you, could you kind of tell us and, and our viewers the, the, the difference within, within MEP hangers and seismic bracing? Yeah, sure. Usually when the project starts, as I mentioned in the beginning, our engineering team will read the full project specification and we will see what is the designer requirement for this project. And adding to that, for each country, there is a special code 
specialist uh, special chapter for seismic bracing for non-structural element, which is fall down under the MEV seismic bracing. In that code, they will put the zoning of the seismic map, where it is the map effect more in that map according to the country, seismic zone, and some important factor like a building height, like a soil type, like uh, is it a public area or non-public area, what is the type of the building, is it hospital, a metro, a commercial building. So all of these factors, we will take it in consideration in our design, and based on the factor, we will calculate the percentage of, of how much the seismic ratio it will be from the dead load, okay? Then to move to that design and the code required, we will follow the international and the local regulation and code like UBC code. We have also international building code and there is some building and some area want to design according to the British standard. And also for each utility and each service, there is a, diff uh, a different code like for firefighting pipe or fire protection system, we will follow an FBA 13. For air duct, we will follow SMACNA. So all of this code together, we will read it and we will sit it. We will submit a full proposal, technical proposal to the client or to the designer. They will review it and then we will go ahead and put the contract. Okay. And, and Imran, what's, what's your thoughts there on that? You know, what you'd like to add in terms of the, the differentiations of, of MEP, MEP hangers and seismic bracing? Anything you agree with with, with Fami? Yeah, definitely. I agree with Fami, and he has already touched on the the main quotes, which I was going to mention about. But yeah, I mean, the local guidelines uh, compliance takes precedence, um, and when liaising with the client or convincing them the importance of it, uh, we always write behind the the local guidelines that yes, it is important. Um, so for Dubai, we have the Dubai Seismic Code, and for Saudi Arabia, we have the SBC 301 Code, which relies mostly on the international codes. Like uh, we use quite a bit uh, reference in our specification from 2006 IBC Code. Um, in addition, we have reference from ASHRAE Handbook, Chapter on Seismic and Wind Resistant Design. Um, in our structural sections, we have uh, references from ASC 798, minimum design loads for buildings and other structures. ASC SEI 702, minimum design loads uh, for buildings. Um, then we have the ASC SEI 705, chapters 1, 2, 11, 13, 20, and 21. There's also a reference. For ducks, which Fami also mentioned, the SPACNA seismic restrain manual um, comes into the, the picture and for sp uh, sp fire protection uh, sprinklers is NFPA 13. So what you will find in terms of differentiation, yes, there are circle differences in codes and requirements. Does the, the starting point uh, that the building use and nature of occupancy should be currently, uh, should be correctly identified, which Fami also mentioned. Uh, along with the site analysis to determine the, the, the seismic design category and also the, the component importance factor, which is very key because above one, that's where the MEP requirements come in. So, so it's very important that projects which require seismic restraints for MEP systems and uh, components um, will require project specific certification and that the design of the, the seismic restraints selected for the MEP systems and their components will meet the code specification and, and any other details uh, which is more stringent. So we have this clause in our uh, specification as that the, the more stringent of it will apply uh, so that there's no deviation and it's, it's followed properly. Um, and the certification is to be provided both in the submittals and the construction uh, documents. Yeah. Okay. Um, and I mentioned earlier in the webinar that you, you both have um, quite a lot of experience um, with, with, with projects within the region um, kind of to do with, with, to do with seismic design. Um, so Imran, could you give us some examples of some of the, the projects that you worked on during your career or the projects that stand out for you? Yeah, I think, uh, yeah, I've been lucky to work on many interesting and high profile projects. The, the few recent ones which was completed, uh, which I would like to quote will be Medina Jumeirah phase four uh, hotel and resort and the, the Blue Waters residential 
hotel, uh, residential and hospitality uh, component of it. Um, so when the, the project assessment was uh, done in terms of seismic evaluation, um, it was categorized under uh, design category C. And the, the component importance factor was noted as 1.5. So in definition, uh, what it means is the MEP system is required to remain in place and function for life safety purposes. Following an earthquake, the component important factor assigned to the non-structural component shall be 1.5. So for this particular project, uh, the systems which fell into the, the seismic category were the fire sprinkler piping and the fire suppression systems, smoke removal systems, um, steam lines or high pressure hot water lines and also the, the fuel system for generators and containment for fire life safety systems. So we ensure that the independent assessments like Fishers or any other reputed manufacturers were in place. Um, the specification was robust and uh, the installation was a certified installation. Um, we reviewed it uh, with our site team as well. So yeah, those were the, the key projects which I can think of. Okay, thanks, thanks Imran. Um, Fami, same question to you. Obviously Imran seems to uh, have worked more on the, the hospitality side um, within with projects. Do, do you at Fisher Middle East do the same? Are you looking more towards hospitality or are you, what, what are some of the projects that, that have stood out for you? Are they in other sectors? Yeah, for sure. We as Fisher, we are working in all type of the project. And I just want to give you a piece of information that Fisher is the main or the first supplier or manufacturer in the region, especially Saudi Arabia, got a, fair, a seismic approval in the project. So we were the first manufacturer to get this uh, approval. And from our experience, Fisher now is running for seven, more than 70 years. So we have a wide experience in uh, all type of the projects. We already completed uh, our name, the completed project uh, in the region. We work in uh, Holy Mosque uh, in Mecca. It is a world famous and the Giga project in the region. We work in the railway station also in Jeddah. We work in Riyadh Metro, in Doha Metro, in Dubai Metro, in Expo 2020 in, in Dubai. We work also in some medical centers across the region. We work also in some power plant and refinery project for oil and gas. As you know, GCC is very famous in oil and gas. So we work with this type of projects. And also we completed the Louvre Massium in Abu Dhabi uh, with our seismic uh, pressing system. So, uh, and also we have so many projects ongoing that still not completed. So in general, Fisher are specialists with all type of the project. As I mentioned, our team is completely experienced and uh, completely uh, the competence level we have is more than 70 years and we can approach and did and we can do a design and close the requirement for any type of the project under any requirement or any standard. And as you know, all of this project, it has a different requirement and different codes. So based on the site condition, based on the exact client requirement or based on the designer, what he needs, we will provide him with a suitable solution. In Fisher, we have multiple solutions like more than six or eight solutions. Based on the require, we will provide the best practice solution for them. Okay. And um, the seismic field is, is, I would say, is quite a, um, it's quite complex. Um, so I would like to know what challenges that you've both faced within um, seismic design within the MEP sector and, and how have you kind of overcome these obstacles at your respective businesses? Um, Fami, perhaps you'd like to start us off with this. Yeah, that's a very important question. As we mentioned in the beginning, the main challenge and main obstacles we are facing in the project or in the region that the awareness level for the contractor, let's say, for the clients, for the designer, it is not that much to understand the importance of the seismic. Everyone sitting and he's saying that GCC area and the Middle East area is quite safe because we don't have that much earthquake like different uh, area in the world. But in fact, we have so many earthquakes happening yearly, as I mentioned in the beginning. So the main challenge and obstacles we face that the people is still not educated enough and they didn't feel that 
if really the seismic required or not. They just want to save some money in their construction progress, but they will forget the future, what will happen for the building. So to overcome it from this point, we as Fisher and one of the market leaders for this uh, scope, let's say, we put on our shoulder the responsibility to educate and to keep learn our customer and our designer about this point. We keep doing frequently a webinar, online webinar for seismic, on-site uh, testing and mock-ups for the seismic, just to let them feel that how easy the seismic bracing is. Because most of the people, they feel that seismic is something difficult and we cannot do it outside and it will take time and love the response. But our duty to show them how our solutions and how our engineering department can make it as simple and easy for everyone, for client, for designer, and for contractor. One more point, the second point, which will become uh, during the construction. During the construction, the seismic bracing, the contractor will leave it till the end. And he will reach the point that all of this utility fixed at the ceiling, and he don't have a space to install the bracing for the seismic. And here, the point will come to on us that how we can make the installation for this seismic in this area or this case easier than usual. Because imagine the fall ceiling and the ceiling filled with MEB uh, pipes, duct, cable tray, fall ceiling, all the utilities, all the area, all the utilities serving the building will be connected to the ceiling. So now we'll come to the point that we as a fisher, we will try to give and provide the best solution to both the bracing system and the seismic bracing in a very simple way. So to solve this issue, we introduce our BIM service. BIM service, I think everyone has heard about BIM service. BIM service, it is a software like Revit. We, from the beginning of the project, we can take the Revit model for the MEB services. We can install our support in that model and we will provide the contractor a very, a very well-coordinated drawing where he will just take the, the drawing and he will apply it at site as it is. So he will not face any difficulty in the future or while installing any type of uh, support. So this is the main obstacles we are facing uh, right now for the bracing system. Okay. It's interesting you say BIM, BIM service there, Farmy. Imran, is that something that you use as well, the SSH? Yes, uh, obviously we use at SSH as well. And what Farmy mentioned is important. You need to have the, the specialists on board at early stages because as designers, um, we you do the, the space planning, you do the, the early coordination, and you do your riser shaft planning. So if that is not properly done, considering uh, where the project is located and the seismic requirement of it, then you'll have issues later on uh, at the site. So yeah, it's a very important factor. Now from our side, the the, the challenges what I have seen is one main challenge which Fami also addressed is the, the limitation in understanding the importance of seismic design. Now, okay, um, where you have applications like hospital, Etc. Yes, it's better understood by the client, but especially uh, what I've seen in the, the residential or hospitality side of projects, the, this item, uh, especially on the value engineering uh, list, you know, um, and the contractor is willing to, to omit it uh, for the MP systems. So, so it's important that they understand the minimum local code uh, compliance, um, and then the specification uh, to over, uh, needs to be robust to overcome this. Clearly specifying the seismic design category, the component importance factor, and an early dialogue with the client uh, is very important. And engaging the, the specialist is very important at early stage, so you don't have the issues down the, the construction line. The, the another challenge is, like I mentioned um, earlier, is applying the, the correct uh, component importance factor and design category. And many a times uh, you will see that um, it goes directly off to the, the site is not handled well on the, the design side of things. And you will see uh, some of the uh, non-standard contractors or will try to fiddle with it and the, the correct importance uh, factors not assigned, uh, which that's why the requirement of an independent specialist comes in 
to validate the seismic requirements and ensure that it is met such that there is no excessive over design. We obviously don't want that. Or major omissions comprising the design intent, which is also very important. The last one, which uh, I usually come across, is on the site. Uh, is related to the the anchorage or the attachment of the MEP components and the seismic restraints to the building structure has always been a gray area um, and generally left to the contractor with little or no guidance. Um, that's why we ensure that we quote ASC SCI 705, which gives some uh, general guidance which needs to be followed along with guidance from consultants and appointed uh, specialists at, at an early stage. Um, these are the, the key challenges, uh, what I have seen in the region, in, in addition to what Fami has already mentioned. Okay. Uh, and I mentioned earlier in, in the webinar, obviously, the, the, the Middle East is, is quite prone um, to earthquake, earthquakes occurring. Um, I think within the last year, we've seen earthquakes happen in the likes of Syria and, and, and Iran and and most recently, um, the latest earthquake uh, hit the western coast of Turkey just a couple of days ago, um, which caused quite significant damage to, to buildings and, and caused them to collapse. I think there was there was as many as 20, 20 maybe even more buildings that were, were damaged. Um, so, Imran, I'd like to know from you to start off with, how fundamental is the role of seismic solutions um, for the built environment, especially in light with this recent earthquake um, off the coast of Turkey? And, and what can we do to prevent um, buildings from being, from being damaged and, and collapsing? Yeah, exactly. I mean, um, you, like if you Google it and you can see how devastating it could be. So the damaging effects of earthquakes are of significant concern, especially in areas where you have such high um, earthquake frequencies. So um, earthquake damage to inadequately restrain mechanical and electrical systems within buildings can be quite extensive um, to the extent that it can knock off the supporting structure itself um, due to, like Fahmi mentioned, the earthquake related building movement, which can be threatened to both the life as well as the, the property. So what needs to be understood here is uh, the cost of properly restraining this equipment is insignificant compared to the associated cost of replacing or repairing the equipment and to, to, and to the cost of system downtime as a result when such a seismic damage to the building services happen. So you rather have it, uh, you focus on it and have it in place at an early stage and then trying to repair it when such damage has happened, which, which will be much more costly compared to your initial investment. So, so proper utilization of the systems can reduce the threat to life and also minimize long-term costs due to equipment damage and associated loss of service. Also, what needs to be factored in is the probability of earthquakes are increasing. Now, based on the, the recent study, 10% um, um, probability increases every 100 years. So that also needs to be factored. The building owners and the operators should not be thinking about that, the present, but also to the, the long-term uh, life of the building in the next 30, 40 years. Um, and many of the, the good owners and developers are thinking that, and that's why you have the, the process in place for that. Yeah, that's my my take on it. Okay, and and Fami, what what do you think are the other factors um, that need could need to be considered by uh, by companies such as yourself um, in countries that are kind of prone and have earthquakes kind of happen quite 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 a lot? What 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 do you think um, is important when you you're, you're working on a project? Yeah, the important thing, as we mentioned uh, before, me and Imran that we have to look and study the country-wise and the code uh, 100%. And we make we have to make sure that the design done for the seismic bracing and the MEP services has been done in the correct way. Because as you see in the seismic bracing, there's so many factors affecting the design. If we neglect one of them, the design will be messed up and it will be not correct. So the main duty to make sure that we are selecting the right factor in the right uh, application. So in this case, we will 
guarantee that the seismic bracing has been installed in the, a very uh, organized way and in the proper way. And also what we can see in the last, uh, let's say, five years or three years, that there is some improvement from the consultant and the clients themselves about the seismic. Because now in the project, in the, in the, in the countries and in the project, if we will make a comparison before, in between 100 projects, we will get 10 project required seismic. But now out of this 100, we'll see around 20, 25 project required seismic. That give an indication about the level where we reach and the awareness of the contractor and the client about the importance of the seismic bracing for the MEB. And this is actually what we need. In the end, we need to save the people life. We will look to save our property from damages and we want to live in peace. Okay. Um, and I want to come to the, so we've got the, the penultimate question of, of the webinar. Um, and I want to discuss, you know, how far we've come as an industry um, in terms of uh, seismic requirements um, to, to obviously prevent damage to buildings from, from natural disasters such as earthquakes. So, Imran, you know, what, what's the comparison um, compared to the likes of 10 years ago? How, what, what's been the progress in terms of, um, in terms of seismic development? Yeah, I like to be optimistic as well. So yes, definitely. Um, there, like uh, Fami also mentioned, there has been progress. And if you take UAE itself, uh, they are very quick and uh, the government is quite swift in taking actions. And they have responded based on the, the earthquake tremors, which were felt quite a quite a few years back, which resulted in the in the Dubai Seismic Code, uh, Code Guidelines updates. Also, uh, in terms of Saudi Arabia, you have SBC Code 301 reflecting the, the seismic requirements for KSA. So there have been uh, many developments due to increased seismic activities in the region. But like I mentioned in my previous response that uh, the studies are showing that the there is an increased probability which is like 10 percent increase in probability over every 100 years so which factors greater attention needs to be given to the subject and uh, more uh, webinars as well as the the more education needs to be coming on every aspect on the consultant side on the contractor side as well as the client side um, so that everyone understands the, the importance of it, not for the present, but also for the, the long term, the future. So I see the, the guidelines getting refined further uh, in the coming years as well. There has been improvement, but I see that there is more scope for it and, and I see it getting refined further. Okay. And Ami, would, would you agree with Imran then? Do you think there is more scope for improvement? Um, you know, you have obviously have quite a lot of well, you have extensive experience of being an engineer within this region. Um, so, so what, again, what comparisons do you think that, that there has been over the past 10 years, do you think? Yeah, right. I agree totally with uh, Imran and I'm very optimistic in this. There is a lot of improvement in the codes and in the client requirement regarding the seismic. Now, let's say most of the project would require the seismic and there is improvement. The awareness level for the seismic importance has been increased for all the people, site engineers, the contractor, the consultant, the clients. And also there is some, uh, let's say, uh, straight comment and straight development on the code to use a seismic in some certain condition. Before it was a little bit open, now it is a specific where it will increase the number of seismic bracing installed at site. All of this uh, requirement and all of this improvement, it will make the situation more and it will make it a safe in, uh, more safe in the future. <clears throat> okay. And uh, a question for both of you. I just want to get your perspectives um, on, on the, the outlook for the solutions. Um, obviously, 2020 has been a, quite a, a different year, but quite a remarkable year. So, um, you know, what, what are the plans going forward for, for Fisher and SSH? Um, Imran, we'll start off with you. Yeah, I mean, that's a, that's a very good question. And definitely it has been a very interesting year. Um, 
So we at SSH uh, stays in close contact with reputed manufacturers and specialists in the region uh, to stay up to date with latest cost effective, which is very important uh, in, in today's construction industry to be cost effective, seismic solutions, um, and will continue to do so. We're also busy updating our design, internal design guidelines in, in SSH to, to focus more on the, the coordination perspective related to smart seismic and uh, the lesson learned and feedback which we got from the, the site teams. Um, so we ensure that is, is actually relevant and addressing the uh, the problems which they are facing on site so that the designs are more robust and going going forward. In terms of the plan for 2021, like I said, is to further refine the specifications and general details uh, associated to the seismic placing, et cetera, um, in coordination with the reputed manufacturers to make it more robust and cost effective um, and based on the lesson learned in the, the recent projects which we had. Um, in addition, being part of the, the CIPSA UA committee as vice chair, uh, like I mentioned, we're busy updating the guidelines for UAE um, and also creating the guidelines for Abu Dhabi and Saudi Arabia. So one of the area of focus definitely would be the, the seismic related activities and the good practices uh, included in these guidelines. And we'll also be getting in touch with the, the municipality and the authorities for the same to get their feedback on it so that we can create more awareness within the region for this particular topic and ensure the the cost effectiveness as well as the, the robustness of the solutions uh, are in place. So yeah, that's the, the plan from our side. Okay, and uh, what, what, when are these guidelines, <coughs> when, when do you think they will be implemented for the likes of Abu Dhabi and, and Saudi Arabia, do you think Imran? So, like I said, the, the technical committee is quite busy uh, with it at the moment. Um, but obviously, when we launch it as an entity as SIPSE, we need to factor a lot of factors in. So it's a process. It, uh, we will uh, finish it by, say, mid or second half of next year. Then it will go to the, the SIPSE HQ for their final review and affirmation. Um, in the meantime, we'll also get feedback from the authorities and other industry experts um, to, to see what they think about those guidelines and we are in the right direction, especially on the, the cost effectiveness. Um, so once those boxes are ticked, um, then we, we are looking at the, the launch of it like the, the, the last quarter of the, the next year. That's, that's the plan at the moment. Okay. Uh, Fami, what, what's next for Fisher? Um, what, what do you have planned for 2021? Yeah, uh, as you know, Fisher uh, never stopped the innovation and our logo, Innovative Solution. So we're always giving a better solution for based on the site and the market requirement. And since we see an improvement in the seismic requirement at market, so we have to adapt ourselves to provide the most efficient solutions. <clears throat> Now we are working in our R&D department in so many solutions to make the fixing the, the seismic bracing easier than before and to make it a small step for the contractor, not to imagine that still it is a huge step for him. So as I mentioned, we started with ABIM services since two years and for sure it will continue till 2021 and, <coughs> sorry, and for more years. The main purpose of using BIM services that to give the contractor and the client with the most coordinated drawing. So he will not face any clashes at site. He will not face any issue to stop mm -hmm. him installing the bracing system. So from the, from the, <clears throat> from the BIM model, we will, we will give them all the support location. So at site during the construction step, they just want, will open this drawing and will uh, see the location of the support where it will be and accordingly, they will install. If we follow this one, it will remove all the clashes and it will make the process of installing faster and faster. One more thing, we have innovated another solution using a wire system bracing. And uh, I don't know if you are familiar in wire system bracing. The wire system bracing, it will be installed in the last stage of the project. 
means that the contractor and the client, he can put all the services one time, and then in the end of the project, he can put some wire bracing in some certain location based on the design. The wire system will give us some flexibility to install the bracing in different direction, in different angle. So here we will solve again the point where the, the our customer always says that I don't have a space to install the bracing system. So by inviting those two services, it will solve, let's say, 90% of the contractor and the project issue. And for sure, there is a lot of uh, innovative in the pipeline. I will share it in the proper uh, in the right time. Now we cannot say more. So BIM system and the wire system, it is our main plan for 2021. <clears throat> Great, and we uh, obviously look forward to hearing more about that of the exciting news for, for next year. Um, great insight from, from Fami and Inran. Um, thank you very much for your uh, expertise in the, in the seismic uh, solutions for MEP services. Um, but we have around 10 minutes left of the webinar for a Q&A uh, from our participants. Um, I can see that obviously a couple of questions have come through uh, today from, from today's discussions, and we've had viewers um, tuning in from all around the world, which is uh, which is fantastic to see. Um, so there's this one question that stood out uh, for me. Um, so one participant said, uh, said uh, up to what rich scale of, of, of an earthquake should we consider serious MEP installations? Um, Imran, would you, would you like to answer this question from the participant? Yeah, sure. Um... So yeah, there are different factors associated to it, uh, based on the the regions and the the soil factors. So, we based on the regions um, is categorized into the categories. And seismic design category needs to be considered. So that's what we consider more while designing the the systems because you cannot design on the the worst case scenario. Um, mm -hmm. So the standards give you the the seismic design categories, which ranges from A to F. And for MEP, the, the requirements come more into the picture uh, from the category C onwards. That's where all the, the fire life safety systems, the smoke systems, um, um, so, and the, the high pressure hot water lines, fuel lines, etc., comes into the picture. In addition to this, if the, the clients have any specific requirements or they are proactive or more vigilant about the, the seismic uh, requirements, then obviously we have to, as designers, we have to consider that as well and ensure it's incorporated in the design as well as our specification documents and going forward implemented on site uh, by the contractors and the construction documents. So that's the, the important uh, side of things uh, from the design side, which we, we should factor in. And, and Farm, do you have the, the same approach at, at Fisher in terms of rich scale of rates? Yes, right. I agree totally with the, uh, Imran what he said. Especially for seismic, there is an accord and a standard and requirement based on this code and regulation, what is mentioned there for each country, specific area in the country, we have to follow the mentioned factor, whatever the Richter rate and whatever the earthquake uh, dangerous, it will be mentioned there in the code and regulation. So as I mentioned, the most important part for the designer to select the suitable uh, factors based on that specific area, based on that specific project. So in this case, we will make sure that all design done in a proper way and has been done in a right way as could need and specification required. Okay, and another question that um, they, they've asked about the the, the application. Um, I, I presume that means the, the MEP application of a, of a building. And what strength of earthquake do do you plan this application? Um, Fami, could you answer this one? Yeah, actually for the building, if we look to the building, there is a lot of application required a seismic uh, system. But since our webinar today only for MEB system, that's why we made our spot for our discussion on the MEB. But if we look to the normal fixation in the building, like false ceiling, like uh, facade system, the curtain wall, if we are not using an approved fixing anchor or approved fixing methodology, approved according to seismic uh, requirement so that's why uh, then we will not take any seismic condition so if you look to the building all the application it should have a seismic requirement and in the code it will be detailed for which application required seismic and what application not required seismic. 
But the main focus in today's webinar for MEV services, if, the, if you are more interested about seismic services in the building, we can make another uh, webinar talking about seismic application for different, uh, seismic, uh, sorry, seismic solution for different application, like curtain wall, like uh, fan supporting system, like uh, facade fixing, a uh, false ceiling fixing, and we can discuss more about this detail. And the guy who asked this question, if you can just reach us on Fisher, we can answer you in more detail. Brilliant. And uh, there was also another person called Shashika Rodrigo who was asked, what's the maximum micron level? Um, they've asked whether Fisher can provide this, this information. Fami, can you, are you able to elaborate? Yeah, uh, for certification, you mean, right? Yeah, if I understood the question, in some project, we, what we faced, uh, there is some consultant or a client required that the supplier should train the contractor worker that they are approved, certified, or certified applicator to use our system. Usually in Fisher, we have the system. We will do an uh, on-site training. We will bring all the material and we will make one mock-up at site showing all the site team how to install the system in the proper way and in the right way. After that, we will take their list and we will give them a certificate from Fisher that this name of engineers are approved from Fisher to install Fisher system, a bracing system. Okay. And Imran, do you, do you have sort of the same training process that Fisher has? Yes. Like I said, I mean, uh, we, I again go back to the, the specification. We clearly say that the, the manufacturers or the installers which will be doing this particular installation has to be um, certified and they need to be the specialist. They need to be at least 10 years in the region um, because there are a lot of steps uh, which comes in picture like the analysis of it and then um, the, the standards which they follow, ICC, ESAC and ASCE. Uh, so all of that is very important because there are a lot of exceptions and everything into the the picture. So all of it has to be certified and installed. And we ensure that we get all of those uh, certificates in place prior to any work proceeds on site. So that's the, the main thing which we do from the consultant side of things. Okay. Uh, and we've probably got time for one more question. So there, there's a question that's just come in um, just a moment ago from somebody called Irene Salak. Um, so they have said, based on the mid category of seismic movement, um, which is more preferable to use bolted or welded seismic brackets or bracing? Um, perhaps, uh, Fami, you can answer this. <clears throat> yeah. Actually, for the seismic bracing, as I said, because of the site limitation for installing the system, usually the welded uh, bracket system, it will make a difficulty at site, how to weld the bracket at site, and how you will make the welding. Especially for welding, there is a special requirement from the contractor, sorry, from the designer and consultant, to make some uh, special test. And to conduct this test at site, it will be a little bit difficult. While our system, as a fisher, we have both systems. We have a welding system and bolting system. But we usually prefer to use a bolting system because the bolting system will give you a more flexibility at site. You can play with the material like Lego. You can just connect the part which you need and you can make the shape what you need as well as the design. So we always prefer to use the bolting system. But in the end, if we use the bolting system, it should be used, uh, it should be torqued as per our recommendation. You have to use some torque cranes and tight the board as per our recommendation. So in this case, we will make sure that the installed system will take the same capacity of the designed one and will be in safe site. <clears throat> okay. And Imran, what, what's your, just adding on what Farmi just said then, what, what's SSH's um, preference of, of brackets and bracing? Uh, well, it's the same. I agree with Fami. So our specification also calls for bolted uh, type because of the, the benefits which uh, Fami mentioned. So, yeah, it's always important that those factors are considered because many a time seismic is put into the, the end of the project. So you need to consider the, the flexibility as well as the, uh, the, the best approach from the seismic side of things. So, yeah, um, I agree with Fami in terms of bolted uh, 
uh, voltage rather than welded seismic support. Okay. Um, and that is uh, all we have time for. for. Um, I hope everyone found today's discussion uh, interesting and useful. I think there were some really detailed um, and good answers from both of you there, Fami and Imran. So, yeah, thank you very much for taking time out of your day to be with us. Um, any final words from either of you? In the end, I want to thank everyone, and I want to thank you especially, Ashley, for this uh, nice event, and thank you for all the audience. And we hope that we answered. I know that you still have some question in your, uh, in your inside, and we hope that we answered most of your question. If you have any more detail, if you need any more uh, clarification, you can contact SharePoint in your country. We have uh, our offices distributed in our country. And uh, just one thing I want to add, if anyone interested for a BIM uh, education, how we are doing a BIM <coughs> model, we are going to conduct an online webinar in December. So everyone, you can keep follow our uh, pages in uh, social media and our uh, emails. So you can register in that BIM webinar to understand more what Fisher can provide you in terms of BIM and the Revit uh, modeling system. Again, thank you very much, all. You're very welcome. And, uh, yes, that, that webinar sounds very interesting for me. I think most of our viewers today will, uh, would like to participate in that. Um, and Inram, will, will, any final words from you? Yes, definitely. I mean, uh, it's a very important topic. So, uh, so thanks to Construction Week, yourself, Ashley, as well as Fisher for organizing such a webinar and having a viewpoint from the, the design side of things as well, as well as from coming from the, the SIPSE perspective as well. So thank you everyone for listening to us and thank you to Fisher and Construction Week for having me today. Pleasure, Imran. Um, and we will be back uh, next year for another episode of the Hard Hat Chat uh, webinar series. And we will be bringing you uh, details of our next episode uh, in due course. Uh, so make sure to stay up to date through our, through our news website, uh, constructionweekonline.com. Uh, thank you very much once again. Um, stay safe and have a great day. Goodbye.